Welcome back and welcome to everybody who wasn't uh, with us earlier in our first session. Uh, I'm Tom Griffin. I'm here with Dave Bingham. We're uh, doing our second session of Problem Solving 101 training. We're going to be talking about carpet removal, uh, different types of blades that you would use for carpet removal, doing some glue rescraping. Um, as we go through this, we're really here for you guys, so please make sure to chat, ask questions. Uh, we're going to be doing some giveaways. We've got some awesome National Flooring Equipment uh, trucker hats that we're going to be uh, handing out. Um, I think we might ask a couple questions ourselves from you guys to get you involved. Um, but if you have any questions as we go through the session, chat them out, text them in, um, however you need to communicate with us. Our team's going to read them to us. And we really are here to answer your questions and help teach you about problem solving in surface prep. Dave? Thanks, Tom. Uh, again, I'm Dave Bigham. I am National Flooring Equipment's uh, Global Director of Training. And I always say that's a fancy title that somebody gave me because the, the guy that gets dirty every day doesn't look good on my business card, but that's really what I do. <clears throat> I've been doing this for about 25 years and everything I've learned, I've learned from you guys. I've learned on the job site. I've watched the tricks and tips and how do you make things easier. And I feel like it's our job to to take all of that knowledge that I've learned from you guys and give it back to the next guy that might not have seen you do that or work at help them become more profitable by speeding up the job, um, understanding the tools and the value prop of the equipment, whether you're thinking about buying the equipment or if you are, even if you already own it, this is a great segment, um, especially specifically talking about carpet. So the, the first thing we're going to talk about for what, it, what do you need to know to take up carpet is double stick carpet. Ooh, I'm that's some nasty stuff. I'm sure a lot of you guys know what double stick carpet is. My general advice is if the job is double stick carpet, run, run away, run away fast. I thought that if, was shale. If you can't, that too. If you can't run away, um, you definitely need to understand that National makes uh, a self-scoring blade that have four inch wings. These are specifically designed for double stick carpet. If you try to use a standard self-scoring blade that looks like this, it won't work. It's a real struggle. Um, I've seen guys with box blades and, and trying to go at it. This is a really simple solution, especially if you're going to ditch it and then put a flat blade on it and take up your smaller squares. These are specifically designed for uh, double stick carpet. So. If you guys weren't aware that we had these, be aware that we do have them, and that's how you solve that problem. Big question I get a lot is, how do I take this double stick carpet up? It's killing me. Uh, I can't get it off the floor. It's a struggle. Th this makes this makes it. This is the solution for that. This is a simple solution for it as well. The next question we get quite a bit is, Dave, what is the difference? <coughs> excuse me between. The 90s and the 45 degree um, self-scoring blades that National offers, they're, they're, for, they're for specific applications. I, and, and there's a little bit of difference. These 45s are really great for really tight, low pile carpet. And I like them because I can run a grinder all the way across and sharpen them pretty evenly, pretty easily on the job site. With a 90, I can sharpen this part, but to get in the corners, you really need a round file. I don't know about you guys, but I can't find my 10 millimeter anywhere. Yeah. It has disappeared forever, no matter how many I buy them. And finding a round file is even harder than finding your 10 millimeter. So if I can, I'm going to try to use a 45. Um, there's going to be some applications that you're going to run into, which I refer to this application as disco carpet. Ah, 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 staying alive. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's green. It's yellow, it's, it's gaudy, it's disgusting, but it's thick and it's shaggy and it's stringy. This doesn't cut through it very well because the, the wings are actually laid over. So if you run into disco carpet, you really want to use a blade, a self-scoring blade like Tom is showing here. With it has 90s degrees. because if I hold these up next to each other, this is a much taller blade and it works much better for that style of carpet. There's two other, there's two other segments to blades that we're going to talk about, um, even though we're talking about carpet, we're, we're going to talk about carpet on 
concrete or on the first floor and concrete on the uh, carpet off the concrete on the second floor. Dave, real quick before we put these blades down, I know we're talking about carpet, but what other uh, flooring or what other coatings might you use a blade like this on? Anything that's monolithic, that's a great question, Tom. Thanks for, uh, thanks for leading us into that. Anything monolithic such as vinyl that's rolled out. Um, my last house uh, in Oklahoma was uh, a slab on grade and it had tons of vinyl in the house. It was, it was pretty bad. Um, we took it up and polished the floor, but we use the self-scoring blades to um, take up that vinyl because you don't want to take up uh, an entire kitchen's worth of vinyl and try to get it out the door, especially with the glue all over it. So to self-score it and cut it into strips is a lot more efficient and it's a lot quicker. Um, rubber uh, floors such as uh, with the walk behinds like on roofs, flat top roofs. Um, I've actually seen a whole bunch of guys use these in um, fountains where they use uh, a rubber membrane to protect it, uh, parking deck coatings, um, anything that's um, a solid sheet. Um, we actually use really big, thick uh, blades for our big, huge Viking on the bridge decks because those bridge deck coatings are like a really thick rubber and it's got mesh in it and then more rubber on top of it. You're gonna use a, a, a self-scoring blade for that so you can take it up in strips. Um, another question we get that I think think if I get the question a lot of times guys don't even realize we make bevel up and bevel down blades why do we make two different kinds of blades you we're going to try to come in close and show you the difference and there's two really specific applications for these two blades and what that is is Tom here is holding a bevel up, which is used for removal on concrete. So how I remember it, how I try to teach guys how to remember this is, uh, this has got a ramp, like an evil Knievel ramp. It's bevel up. So bevel up is for downstairs. Bevel down is for upstairs. So what's upstairs? That means it's on a subfloor, right? It's on wood. So my cut on this blade is exactly the opposite and what happens is when you're on concrete you can cut right you can cut right in and scrape but if I take this upstairs into the wood it's going to catch on the wood and you're going to really struggle to remove whatever's glued or to that wood floor just going to remove the wood floor or you're going to remove the wood floor so if it's bevel down you guys see how it's scraping right along it's not hanging up so bevel down is for upstairs so BU and just the opposite. That's why there's two specific kinds of blades and how they're designed and for those specific purposes. So when you're taking up carpet upstairs or downstairs, make sure you order the right bevel up or bevel down. If you still have questions about that, give us a call. We can talk to you about it a little bit more. And obviously there's different lengths and widths. Uh, Don't forget guys, ask questions, chat in, let us know what your thoughts are. Um, we really want this to be for you. We're going to talk a little bit about one more style of blades when it comes to carpet removal. We have 0.062 and 0.094 blades. That refers to the thickness. This is a 0.062 blade. If I put this really thin blade on a big heavy ride-on machine, it's probably going to bend. It's not the right tool. The 0.062 blades, I highly recommend you use these for your walk behinds. Um, they're less expensive. So for your walk behinds, um, this is probably the option you wanna go with the 0.062. If you're using a ride-on machine, you definitely wanna use a 0.094. It's a much thicker, stronger, heavier duty blade. So if you have to stand it up and put a little more pressure on it for some reason, if it's stuck really well in one spot, it'll withstand that. That doesn't mean you can't use a .094 on a walk behind. You can use either one, but I definitely ask that if you're gonna choose a blade for a rider, don't choose a .062 blade. Um, use the right blade for the right tool. And if you guys, you guys can go online and see this catalog. Um, and if you want a paper catalog, which we still print, pick up your rotary phone 
and dial Nationals 800 number <laughs> and say, we'll send you one. Our uh, customer service team on the other end of the phone is always happy to talk about blade applications. I think that's one of the most uh, often asked questions that we do get and we're always happy to share our information or even if it's just calling in and saying, I think this is the blade that I should use, um, just to confirm it, we're always here to help. What's really helpful is if you go online or if you have a paper catalog, um, the X's tell you which machines that the blades specifically will work for. And if there's not an X in the box, then you don't want to use that blade for that machine. It's a great quick reference guide for you. Um, our marketing team put a ton of work into this, a lot of research. But if you still have questions, like Tom says, just reach out to us. But for a quick reference, look at the X's, look at the boxes, look at the machine model, so you make sure that that's getting you in the right direction. All right. So we talked about 45s, we talked about 90s, and we talked about some thinner and some thicker blades. And just to be aware, if you have a ride-on machine and you had some patch that you needed to remove underneath the carpet that was failing, you could switch to a .188 blade or a .250 blade, which is a really thick blade, to rip that material off the floor. Um, it's typically not used for carpet removal, but if you remove the carpet and you find a bunch of old rotten patch and you really want to get it off the floor, you get switched to one of those much thicker blades and they stay sharp for a really long time. Uh, and they start out really small and they get really big. So depending on how tough the removal is, you can choose a whole lot of head pressure on a really small point or you can spread it out across 27 inches if you like. Not All right, guys, uh, let's ask a question, I think, for our first hat. Um, please give an answer. What is Dave's favorite soda? First person to answer correctly gets a national trucker hat. Cool. And if you were with us in the first segment this morning, I think Martin gave away a national wrapped Lamborghini, I'm pretty sure. Sorry if you missed out. You really got to <laughs> tune in. But the hats are really cool, actually, seriously. Um, now we're going to switch a little bit and we're going to talk about uh, angles for scraping up carpet and then a re-scrape angle. Um, it's a pretty popular question that we get. How do, how do I set my machine up so it works for me? And one of the biggest questions I get that we all get at National is, hey Dave, I have a commander, but I can't change the pitch or the angle. Actually, I can increase the angle of my commander with a bolt-on accessory that's really cool if you don't have one. I recommend you get one right away. I'm going to let Tom show it to you. It's a 6280-505. And it does two things for you. Not only does it increase your angle, but if you guys are familiar with the ride-on machines that National makes, the swivel head attachments do just that. It swivels. So this allows on a walk-behind to do the same thing. The blade will stay in contact with the surface as the wheels are coming over the material that you've already removed. It's pretty cool. And we actually make two different kinds of swivel heads. This is a 6280-500. So why is there a difference? We're going to walk these up to the camera and show you guys. I have the top of the clamp removed on both of these for visual. You can see this is very narrow. The black shows the, the blade where it actually sits and this one as well. You can see this one's much more narrow, and I'm gonna show you guys why. Later, we're gonna talk about rescraping, and we're gonna kinda do a little bit of show and tell on that. This is a razor blade. It comes in a pack of 50, and it's disposable, but it's really great for rescraping up glue. If I try to put this in this holder, it doesn't stick out very far. I really prefer to hold it in a razor blade holder, because it sticks out a lot farther but this also increases the angle of the attack. And then with the ride-on machines, we're talking about how to take up carpet. We're talking about, this is the same thing, but obviously this is a bigger shank, so it fits on the rider. This is a much narrow, much more narrow slot for the one inch blades and the razor blades. This is a standard blade holder. This, these come with the riders, with a package. These swivel head attachments that are RBH, razor blade holders, this is something that you can add on as an addition if you don't have one. And if you haven't ever used a one inch blade or razor blades, I highly recommend it. 
it'll really speed you up and it'll really help you through some really tough um, applications for rescraping and cleaning up. Uh, I love this. I actually encourage if you do buy an RBH, paint your RBH, your razor blade holder, some really awful color. So if you run into the warehouse and the lights aren't on, or if you're in your trailer, or if you're going to look for it on the shelf, this isn't a national color, this is a Dave thing. I painted this a really ugly color, so I can run over to the shelf and I know that this is my razor blade head swivel attachment, not my standard one. It's a great way to tell them apart. I like that, Dave. Guys, don't forget to ask questions. We're here for you. We've got several hundred people. Sorry, my mic turned off, technical difficulties. So we're gonna, well, I'll back up just a second because we got a little bit of time. I recommend on your razor blade head attachments, paint them a, a really bright, ugly color. So if you're running into the warehouse or you're running into your trailer, you know that this is an RBH versus the standard swivel head attachment that comes with the machine. That way you know that you've got this if you're planning on using razor blades on the job. And if you guys haven't figured out what Dave's favorite soda is, it is the same color as his razor blade head attachment. That's a good clue for you. This is a box. <laughs> this is a box of razor blades. So if you order one of this part number, you get a box of 50. And like I said, these are super sharp so they're really good at getting really down into the glue and getting it off the floor but they're also disposable so you use it throw it away use one throw it away that's why you get a box of 50. all right so we talked a little bit about the commander on how to increase the angle with the 500 and the 505 attachment and how to make it swivel head uh let's see if we can i don't know if we can't it's not really bolted on but tom if you want to hold this yep you want to just hold it up to it so it would bolt on right there, and you guys, you put the deflector on top of it. Actually increases the angle, puts a little more head pressure on it. The other thing you can do with the Commander is you can slide your weights forward. But carpet, I have run into lots of carpet and lots of vinyl that there's a lot of moisture mediation problems. So what happens is you take up the carpet and you find really slimy glue. It's really bad. It's really hard to maintain traction, especially with a walk behind. National's done a couple of things to help you guys defeat that. You might not see it right off. Um, it's not so obvious, but our wheels on our walk behinds have siped wheels. That basically means it has cuts in it. So it's almost like traction you can't see. So as it comes, as it drives along, it grabs and holds. And then the side slide weights, in that situation, I'm probably gonna slide those back to increase my wheel pressure so I get that traction to push that material off the floor even though that glue's real slimy and real slippery. It's a real challenge. That's, that's how we help defeat that. You won't see that with some of the, all those other models on the market. They just don't really care if their machines work. They just want you to buy it and then it's your problem. National's constantly listening to customer's feedback. Um, I think we call it voice to the customer and we try to incorporate solutions for the problems that you guys run into on the job sites. Hey, this is a problem. I really struggle with this. We, we try to take that information and make our equipment better and improve so you can get through more jobs quicker, more efficiently, which means you make more money, which is great. Um, the commanders, we have two, two main walk behinds on the industrial side. Um, it's the 6280 commander, the 6280 HD gladiator. With the gladiator. Um, Do you want me to go get it? Uh, we're, yeah, sure, if you want to roll it over here. I don't, I don't think there's pins in it. Tom's going to roll one over here. You actually have two different holders. So you can do hard goods and soft goods. And since we're talking about carpet, you know, you're going to want to have the soft good holder on there. Both of these come with the machine when you buy it. By the way, National's really good at providing a ton of accessories that makes your jobs easier right off the bat. So right now, it's got a hard goods um, holder on it, which you guys can see this would be for, for example, wood floor. So we're going to change this, and we're going to put a soft goods. So if we were going to use 
this bigger machine, because this is a dual purpose machine, the HD is a, is a dual purpose machine, soft and hard goods. So how you change this is real simple. You don't have to take off the weights or anything. I'm just gonna take my 9 16 and I'm gonna loosen up these five bolts. I'm gonna slide this right out. Well, a little looser. Slide it right out through the slots. Can you guys see the slots? And I'm gonna take my soft goods and I'm gonna slide it right on there. I'm gonna tighten these up. Tom, when you get the yep. one of the holders. So you guys could see that with the hard goods holder, that shank was basically just right on the ground. And with the soft goods, you need more of an angle. You need much more of a pitch. So tighten these up. Not much to this, pretty simple. We just slide this on and obviously we could put a self-scoring blade or just if we're gonna re-scrape with this blade, you can stand it up, Captain. Thanks, Tom. Yep. It's great having uh, it's great having Tom here. Um, thanks, Tom, for joining us. Always. Uh, if you guys have questions, you can always reach out to me, Tom, or if you dial the 800 national number, we are, we are just chocked full of industry experienced people that can answer your questions. And that's what we're here for. Um, we want to provide the best solution for your job so you guys can get through it quick. So that's how easy that is to change. And both of those come with the machine. So real simple. Anybody got any questions about that? Go ahead and chime in. And something you guys are going to notice if you've ever used one of our gladiators versus a commander, especially if you're doing it for soft goods, commander was built for torque. It was built to take the brunt of removing hard goods, which means it's not the fastest machine on the block when it comes to removing soft goods. And that's why we have the commander because it is significantly faster. So if you find that you're only ever doing soft goods, the commander is a great machine to have in your arsenal. But if you're bouncing back and forth between ceramics, removing hard goods, sometimes you're gonna be doing VCT or commercial carpet, the command or the gladiator, excuse me, is actually a much more versatile machine because it's able to remove all of the above. And both of these machines have positionable handles. Um, I don't know if you, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have noticed on camera, but I'm as wide as I am tall. This is a little too much for me, so I prefer to run them like this. This way, I can kind of put my body weight into it, which I have a lot of. So it's real easy for me to just lean on it and go and then reverse. And then these are positionable for transport as well on both these models. So I can put them in the trailer and take up a lot less room. And I was gonna say, what about uh, trying to get underneath a cabinet? There you go. If we or... wanna get underneath a rack or something that's there that I can't, can't move or I don't wanna move, I can drive right underneath it and right out. Great point, Tom. These machines also have wheel scrapers. We talked a little bit about the side slide weights. Um, right now it's in neutral. The drive pins are not engaged. They're just up top. Has tie down points. Um, they both have resettable breakers. Tons of features. If you guys are, uh, if you guys have used anybody else's machine and you've used a national machine, it's really hard to, you're not even comparing apples to apples. The technology and I get asked, Dave, why, why, why a national walk behind scraper? Why is it different? Tell me why it's different. I'll tell you guys why. It's a great question. Well, here. So here's a standard blade. The competitors, I'll try to get where you guys can see me. Their machine has a striking motion like this. It makes the machines loud. And I'm trying to take up this material with the entire width of the blade with every hit. It's not very efficient. Um, it also creates a lot of maintenance with their machine because it's going back and forth. The national design, it actually has an oscillating blade. The best way to explain it is it's gonna go left, right, center. So as I'm going into the material, I'm gonna go one side, the other side, and then the middle. One side, the other side, and the middle. It works on self-scoring blades and flat blades. So if you take a national walk behind to take up carpet and you put a, a self-scoring blade on it and you start working it through the carpet, it's just walking right through it. It's lifting up because of that technology. 
It's also quieter and it's much more efficient and it creates for way less machine maintenance. Tom, how many machines have you seen that guys have been using for 10 plus years? Uh, actually quite a few. Uh, I think it was November, December last year. I had someone ask if I would buy back their model year 2012 Gladiator because he wanted the adjustable handle on the new one. And I said, well, you know, why would you want to sell it back? He goes, well, I really just want the handle. I was like, but the machine works fine. Oh yeah, it's great. So we're talking about a nine-year-old machine that functions fine and the only reason the guy wants a new one is because he wanted an adjustable handle. So let's, we've talked a little bit. Let's actually, I'm gonna turn on a machine that we've got plugged in. We're gonna turn well, on our commander. And while Dave does that, I wanted to mention, uh, when you compare our machines to our competitors' machines, you might notice that ours weigh a lot more than our competitors. That helps you stay in the work. It helps to increase that head pressure. Um, and I find a lot of guys say, well, it makes it really hard to get on and off at the job site, especially residential. We have an aluminum ramp that I think a lot of people forget. It's kind of tucked in there in the catalog. And putting one of those in your work van makes it a breeze to get these machines in and out of somebody's home over a threshold, um, up and down some slight small stairs. Um, there, it, the weight really isn't an issue. Another reason why we're talking a little bit about national well, let me talk to you guys a little bit about some of my passion and, and what this means to me. I've been doing this a long time, and what I've learned is you guys go to work when everybody else goes on vacation. Fourth of July, Christmas, uh, Memorial Day, plants close down, office buildings close down at night. Uh, everybody else gets to go home, and you guys go to work. Uh, because I know that, um, you guys can reach out to my cell phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. If you guys call me on Christmas, I'm going to answer my phone. If you guys call me on the 4th of July, I'm going to answer my phone. If somebody from over the ponds listening to this or in Asia and they're worried about the time difference, oh, I have to wait seven more hours until their office opens. That's not true. You can call my cell phone. You can WhatsApp at me. There's all kinds of ways to get in contact with me all the time. That's pretty much true for everybody at National that I'm aware of, but especially me. Um, I'm the guy that you can reach out to, hey Dave, my machine was doing this, it's not doing this now. I'm struggling with this, am I using the right blade? Um, why is it doing this? Can you help me with this? Yes, I can. Reach out to me, don't be afraid. I'm, I'm, your, I'm your phone a friend. Um, and this isn't just something that I believe in, this is a kind of a national philosophy. We, we care about service after the sale. So it's not, just an, it's not just somebody bought a machine, it's about helping you guys utilize that machine so get your ROI out of it. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help because that's what we're here for. Um, so I get off my soapbox. Uh, I, I'm just real passionate about that. So let's talk a little bit about the Commander. It's really got a lot of the same features as the uh, 6280 HD Gladiator, but we're gonna turn this on and the first thing I'm gonna do is show you guys that the machine doesn't go anywhere. Because I actually get this call quite a bit, it actually has a speed control. So you can adjust how fast your foot per minute is. So guys will get it lined up and they, one of two things happens. You get two drive pins. I have one on this side. They'll put one in and say it drives in circles or they'll have both of them out and it's going but it, it doesn't move. Without the drive pins, it's in neutral. So I'm gonna put it in drive. I've got the other one in. I'm just gonna lean it over a little bit and I'm gonna find the, the hole right here, maybe. I'm gonna engage that. Now both my wheel pins are engaged, so now when I turn it on and push the handles forward, it should go somewhere. But because I have the speed turned all the way down, it's not going anywhere. Dave, my machine like doesn't work. That's fine. Just, there's a turtle and a rabbit. Turn it toward the rabbit. And I'm not insulting anybody, it happens all the time. If you didn't understand this was your speed control knob, it's a great way. So I'm gonna turn it up a little bit and see if we can take off. Turn up my speed. Oh, we hung up. Should 
probably drive some more forklifts on this. I was going to say, we uh, definitely don't cheat when we put down this carpet. We find the strongest adhesive that we can. We drive cars and forklifts on it. So as well as this is stuck, I would certainly probably move my weights back to get a little more traction because the machine's not stopping. The wheels are still turning. And we literally drive forklifts over this. So it's coming up. So the next question I get is, what if, what if it's really, really down and I'm struggling and it's going slow and I want to speed up the job? Believe it or not, if you want to speed the job up with the walk behind, if it's stuck like this is, put on a smaller blade. It'll actually go much faster. And I'm a big proponent of ditching or tic-tac-toeing the floor. So I'll cut strips, we'll call it north and south, and then east and west. Then I'll switch to a flat blade and I'll take the squares up, fold them up and take them right out of the room. I also encourage guys when they're running equipment to run from corner to corner of the room. If you run straight into a joint, you're likely going to bend your blade, break your blade or dull it right away. But it tends to cross the joints. If you go at it at an angle, it tends to transition right over almost every time. So if you guys get into the habit of going over the joint at an angle from corner to corner, you'll get a lot more life out of your blades and you'll spend a lot less on consumables. Hope they don't take that out of my check. That's a great tip. Any questions, guys? One. Chat away. Let us know what you want to know. Okay, so we're gonna switch over to a little bit larger machine. We're gonna do a ride-on machine. Tom, do you want me to ride it? You wanna talk about it? Sure. So. Divide and conquer. The uh, machine that Dave's getting on is actually our newest domestic model. It's the 5000 DL. Uh, this is a great in-between model between some of our smaller ride-on scrapers and our larger ride-on scrapers like the 5700. This is great for tight spaces. It's great for older buildings where the elevators might not be able to support the weight of some of our bigger riders. Um, it's got less batteries in it. So the runtime is not gonna be an all day battery, but I think we rate this around six hours of runtime. Um, it's still a beast of a machine. It's still a great one. So a lot of guys are saying, oh, I really don't want that big machine because I can't use it on all the jobs that I do. Um, this is a great option for you. It has our dual lift technology on the front, yeah. which allows you to not only angle the blade, but also change the pitch and the height of the slide plate without having to get off the machine. So what Tom said is super important if you guys don't understand. The competitors' machines do this. That's great, except for we already saw this carpet's pretty tough to remove. It's been here a while. We've drove forklifts on it. I can lower my slide plate and come at it and slide underneath it without the competition is going to come at it like this. It's a lot harder on the blade and keeping it sharp. My blades stay sharp longer, which means my production goes up. So I'm going to set this down till I touch, come back up a little bit, put a little angle on it, a little head pressure, and then I'm just gonna rip, I'm just gonna rip this carpet off the floor. And you know, as your blade dulls, as you use the blade, you can actually, on the fly, increase that angle, increase that pitch and you're able to do it without having to get off the machine, without having to deal with any nuts or bolts. Um, I jokingly say that out of all the machines I've sold, anybody who buys a dual lift, I've never had anybody say that they wish they hadn't bought one, uh, but I've had plenty of guys purchase our manual machines, just our standard ones, and they always say, man, I wish I had gotten that dual lift. So I'm gonna, why I'm on this machine, we're, gonna talk, we're talking about how to remove carpet, but let's talk a little bit about National. Specifically, there's machines on the market that 
drive smoother. It's because of the valving that they choose to use. And their valving does not last like Nationals does. So if you're re-scraping and you stand your machine up, it tends to want to jump. But that's not a bad design. That's actually operator error. And you're like, what do you mean, Dave? That's operator error. I'm going to show you. And I'm going to show you how to defeat that. Because National is not going to put on valves that wear out and stop working after a year. That means on a job site, you have to take all these hydraulic lines, open your hydraulic system, which is never a good thing. So if, you, if someone like me can teach you how to drive the machine a little more efficiently to keep it from jumping, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to turn it on, and we're going to stand it way up. So like I was doing rescrape. Well, what I see guys doing in the field is they do this. I don't know if I can get this one to jump. I was going to say there the 5,000 apparently doesn't have any uh, jumping skills there. It's not as doesn't jump as much as the other ones, but. So to defeat that, to defeat it jumping or the blade leaving contact with the surface, instead of going forward and backwards and putting opening all that hydraulic pressure because these machines have incredibly strong wheel motors and pumps go left right left right or i don't care if you can go right left if you open one wheel and the other it kind of turns and then goes without leaving contact same thing when you back up i go right left right left and it just comes back a little bit but it doesn't leave contact with the surface that's how you defeat that all right let's uh back this out of the way Dave, I had one more quick question. Yeah. So uh, I'm like Ricky Bobby. I like to go fast. Sweet. Um, and I know that that's one of the uh, big selling points out there for some of our competitors' machines. Can you elaborate a little bit on how going fast doesn't necessarily equate to more production? Absolutely. I've spent a lot of years going out, especially with ride-on machines for National, on like ceramic. Just, look, let's be honest. Just most soft good removal most ride-ons it doesn't matter they work okay i still think ours work better with the technology i think it's easier to see i think they're more comfortable i think the service after the sale there's lots of reasons to buy a national but when we move away from carpet and we start talking about wood floors ceramic tiles tough removals oh let's talk about marble good luck i'll take on the competition any day on a marble at an old jc pennies they don't stand a chance i'd show up with my machines and they're driving in circles around me in the parking lot telling a GC, don't let that machine on the job. Look how slow it is. And I, I just laugh. I'd go park in the corner and let them with their competitor's machine go to work. And the GC would come over and go, hey, Dave, uh, drinking your favorite soda that nobody's figured out yet. Um, are you going to go to work? I said, no, no, go watch him. And I'd sit there patiently for 10, 15 minutes. I'd put on my, my carbide shank. And I'd start at one end of the building, go to the other, and come back. And basically tell him we could go to lunch because by the time we're back from lunch, he might have caught up with us. He's driving around in circles, but because he's hitting the edge of the tile or the wood floor or these tough removals, I'm sliding right underneath it, lifting it up. That's why in my videos everyone says, you're cheating. I'm not cheating. It's, it's the superior design from National's Engineering Department that's patented. They don't have the kind of carbide shanks design like we do, and they don't have the dual lift, especially if you don't have to get off the machine to change it. As it dulls, you'll find you might have to put a little more pitch on it, but I don't have to get off the machine and find a wrench and try to move it. I can do it from the operator's position. So if you guys think that a machine that goes faster per minute, that's, that's fine. It doesn't work faster on the job. When it actually comes to production, National will outperform those machines every single time, which means in the long run, as an end user, you make more money, you move from job to job much quicker, and the GCs love you because you're in and you're out of their way so they can go to their next step. Great question, Tom. Thank you. Right here, brother. Like my man here. I don't know what I'd do without him. Um, we, we have a few minutes, but we're going to talk about um, a scare fire. Earlier, we used this to score um, some wood floor before we took it up. So before we plug this in, we're not going to plug it in yet. We're going to show you guys how to change the drum, how easy it is. And I like scarifiers. They're actually a really versatile tool if you understand it. We're going to put 
a drum like this that has basically TSR teeth on it. And we're going to take up glue off the floor. Ah, that's not going to work. Okay, well, let's see. So obviously we're going to rescrape it, but it depends on the glue. Some of it's going to come up, some of it's not. So if you already have this for rescraping some wood floors or scoring some wood floors, I'm going to put this drum on and I'm going to utilize it in another way to help get some more uh, return on that investment. And so when you buy this machine, the drum that comes with it is meant for concrete prep, right? So the wood floor scoring drum is an additional purchase that you've got to make. But I think a lot of guys find that having these two different style types of drums and uh, with the different styles of teeth really make this a super versatile machine to have in your arsenal. This machine has been tested by a whole bunch of contractors. We're trying some different things, so it's got a ton of hours on it. It still works like a dream. So I'm just going to remove these two bolts, 11 sixteenths. I'm going to pull this plate off, which has a bearing on it. And this is the wood floor self-scoring drum that we were using on the wood floor. I'm just going to slide it off that shaft, put it to the side, and I'm going to slide this one right on. Put my cover back on. Put my bolts back on. And I'm going to show you guys how to set this up so you don't take up too much floor or you don't break your teeth or or mess up a, a shaft or something. I'm going to show you how to make those adjustments. So right now I know for a fact that it's cutting really deep because we are cutting uh, about three quarter inch wood floor, <laughs> almost three quarters. So right now this drum is probably sticking way too far down. So I'm tighten this up. We're going to stand it up. And normally how you want to set it up before you start is before you plug it in, we're going to lower it. We're going to run it across the floor and we're going to adjust it until we hear it touching. That's probably pretty good. Let's see. You want to plug us in, Mr. Tom? Yep. Thank you, you, sir. I'll plug in our vacuum. It's a really great tool if you guys uh, understand its versatility. I really like it. This dust is a vacuum port. Yeah, I was going to say, dust control is important. Uh, no matter what material you're removing, having this vacuum port here uh, really makes a huge difference. Most people are familiar with scarifiers. City municipalities use them. Um, they think that they're just for <laughs> destroying concrete. My that wife gets annoyed when we go on a walk and I see a sidewalk that's been scarified and I point it out. She's like, could you stop doing that? I, uh, I also am guilty of that. I've been married to the same woman for 26 years in a row consecutively without a break. And I'm always walking around looking at the floor. And she's always like, quit looking at the floor. You look depressed. But I'm always looking at the floor everywhere I go. All right, so I'm going to turn this on. So anyways, the point is these machines have a lot more use than just bolt concrete. Cool, let's turn on our vacuum. That's probably a good I idea. I got you. I got you. Thanks, man. Start this up. Oh, they're on the same breaker. Hopefully we don't break it. Too much. Gonna have to raise it up a little bit. I'm gonna raise it up a little bit more. And then we'll set it back down. Too much. So it's going to be hard for you guys to see on camera here, but 
the TSR teeth that are on this machine leave a shop blast like finish on the floor. So as you're removing that glue, you're also starting to prep the floor for its next application. So even if it's just putting more carpet down, you're actually prepping the concrete so your adhesive is gonna stick better to that concrete. So we're gonna switch, we're gonna take this uh, self-scoring blade and we're gonna put a flat blade on. Everybody wants to see my RBH work. Uh, this is a hybrid training we've got. Um, viewers here and I have a live video or a live audience as well so let's switch this to the RBH. I'm gonna pull this pin, pop this in. Let's see, let's see what this one inch blade does. Oh, you want me to do it, Tom? Yeah, okay. I'll let you do it. Um, come on, guys. We're running out of time to figure out what Dave's favorite soda is. They guessed. Okay. Is it Sundrop? Well, we didn't get feed feedback, so. Do they know what Sundrop is? Mountain Dew. It's pretty much it. So there you go, guys. I'm just going slow so you can see what I'm doing. I can obviously go much faster, but... I'm just going slow so you can see it's just ripping it right off the floor. Now, if I was on a job site and I was getting paid by the hour, I'm trying to hurry up, I'm going to do this. I like to go slow for the videos, though, so you guys can see it just peeling it right off the floor. So you can actually see that it's working. And this light you can actually turn off and on. Um, I like it on, but you can turn it off if you really needed to. Always make sure that uh, it's powered down before you hop off. Your foot pegs are adjustable. Your height for your armrest is adjustable. Your seat's adjustable. This is designed for your comfort. If you're the guy that has to ride this all day long, it's a great machine. Um, your operators are going to get off less. They're going to spend more time on it, which is just going to increase your production just by the way it's designed. Um, do we have any questions? Quick type them in because we're going to wrap it up. And thanks for attending, everybody. Tommy, you want to talk a little bit about our yeah, ionizer guys, special? Uh, I know we're talking about carpet here, but we do have our ionizers available. They're great pulling dust contaminants and things out of the air and driving them to the ground. Provides a clean, safe, breathable air in the environment for employees or customers, or even in your own home. Uh, we are running a special on our first generation right now. So if you're interested in one of our ION 4Ks, please reach out uh, and call us today. And our next session is gonna be at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. We're gonna be removing some hard goods. It's all about tile. Excellent, that's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to it. All right, thanks, thanks guys. We'll see you in a little bit. Have a great day.